So in this chapter, we're going to be talking about some proposed changes to the diagnostic criteria for autism. I think these are important changes that are long overdue that will help clear up a lot of confusion. So if you remember from DSM-4 criteria, there was the quality of the communication and quality of social interactions, which were split into separate categories. In the DSM-5, this is combined, and it's worded in a way I think is, is very Im Im important and appropriate, and that's there's persistent deficits in social communication and interactions. So in the DSM-4, often children had a lot of language, and parents would say, hey, they're talking a lot. Um, how can they meet this diagnostic criteria? But their language didn't mean much. It wasn't used to communicate. And so I think this is uh, better expressed in the new diagnostic criteria, where it emphasizes that a child's words need to have um, power. Uh, a child's words need to express something and mean something. It has to have some importance in the quality of the social uh, communication, social in interactions. Another important part of this is that failure to develop, to develop appropriate behaviors at a certain age. In the earlier diagnostic criteria, I'd have children uh, come in and parents would often be confused because, you know, they'd have a five-year-old and they'd say, well, there's some interactive, um, and, you know, emerging interactive play and very good parallel play, but wasn't quite appropriate um, for their age. The next part of the diagnostic criteria, again, uh, restricted interest in repetitive behaviors um, being part of the diagnostic criteria, and that's things like hand flapping, rocking, spinning, uh, finger twirling the mouth or hair, a lot of the things that we would consider uh, signs for autism um, by the previous diagnostic criteria. But something that's new that's added is having unusual sensory responses. So this is something those of us who diagnose autism um, are frequently encounter and causes a lot of confusion with uh, parents. Uh, that's where parents will come in and they'll say, you know, I, I know they have a little bit of language delay um, and maybe have some re repetitive behaviors, but what they really have, what's really been disabling for them, are these ab abnormal, unusual sensory responses. The ear covering, uh, the rocking, the visual um, um, responses, looking at things, thing, things askew, being fixated on um, uh, spinning toys, opening, closing, clo closing doors. has such a strong sensory component to it. So this, I think, is very important to have in the new diagnostic criteria for autism as it's, it's almost universal. It's, it's very rare that I'll have a child in the office that doesn't have unusual sensory responses. So I think that's a much needed, a very appropriate addition to the diagnostic criteria for autism. And thirdly, that the symptoms must be present in early childhood, but may not manifest until social demands exceed the limited capacities of the, of the children. So these diagnostic criteria proposed in 2010 and may be formalized in 2013. In the next chapter, we'll be talking about some autism spectrum disorders and the prevalence of autism.